Beverly Turner on LBC. Good afternoon. This is Beverly with you until four o'clock, and I'm joined in the studio by uh, Sol Campbell. Hi, Sol. Hi. Good morning. Afternoon. I'm fine. I'm great. Afternoon. Yeah. Good. Um, am I right in thinking you're quite a fan of LBC, aren't you? Yes. It's a um, fantastic radio show. Uh, there are fantastic presenters like you. Excellent. That's a very good start. I always like it, an interview that starts like that. Um, but, I mean, there is no better place to judge the mood of this city than, than listening to LBC and listening to the things that our callers want to talk about. But you you live this lovely lifestyle of an ex-professional footballer. Mm. How do you know what London people would want if you were to be their mayor? I think it's all about how you apply yourself. Um, I'm from a working class background. Yes, some people might say I've had a wonderful life. And I have had a wonderful life playing football. It's been great and uh, I've done some wonderful things and travelled the world, res represented my country, done some amazing things. And um, yes, I you know got paid for that privilege. Mm. But... Before that, I've, I, I'm from a working class background. I, it was very hard for me. Nine, nine brothers, two sisters. wasn't easy for me in Stratford, Plasto. So, yes, I, I've not forgot that. Um, yes, I've moved on from there. And it, I think it's all about where you're going in life. And I think there's a lot of people who are in that position who need a, little, need a leg up. Mm. And I want to give them an opportunity to better their lives, uh, move on to the next level. Basically, I want them to have an opportunity, like everyone else. Because your family were traditional Labour voters. You've spoken about this. So why Conservative for Sol Campbell? Well, you look at it. I, I look at the Conservatives and their ideology, their how they look at life. It's all about um, aspirational kind of living and lifting yourself up from where you where you st where you stand or stood it's not all about standing still um i want to move on sometimes you have to look at yourself and say because my family were labor i have to be labor um you're almost stuck in a box if if that was the same we'll be 300 years ago and you know 500 people running the uk mm. um there is there's, there's opportunities for everybody and i want to do that and i want to be a part of that and uh I think London needs that. Uh, just, just for listeners, if you want to watch this interview, by the way, you can go to lbc.co.uk uh, where you can see Sol in high definition. It, it's not an unattractive sight, Sol. You clearly spend a lot of time in the gym still. We just, let's just establish <laughs> that. But what does a day look like now for you? What is your average day? Um, I do a couple of days in the gym, but not like... Whole like, days? Uh, no, I'd say a couple of hours. You can say goodbye to that if you get into politics, you know. <laughs> No, I think it's healthy. You should always keep yourself fit, uh, regardless of what you're doing, really. Um, yes, it's not like I'm a professional anymore. Um, I don't need to be on that level anymore. Uh, I think it's quite nice to release those endorphins when you're working out. Um, and it's all about balance, work, family life. Uh, it's all about balance, and I think I've got the balance now. Exactly. So why on earth would you want to be Labour Mayor? You're absolutely blooming loaded. Um, you have this wonderful lifestyle. Why would you want... Did you say Labour Mayor? Did I say Labour Mayor? I meant London yeah. Mayor. Sorry, why would you want to be London Mayor? Why? Uh, because I want to give other people an opportunity. There's so many people in London from... Um, yeah, you know, you, I, I'm from Plasto, Stratford. Uh, yes, Stratford's been amazing, but you go further down the road to Plasto, East Ham, it's a nightmare. Uh, people need opportunities and um, I know people, I know there's talent out there. I know that we've got to do more. I think the city has to do more and I want to be that kind of um, avenue. I want to be that uh, almost like a lightning rod to North East, South West London, away from Central London. I think big businesses should help. If I, been, if I was mayor, I would definitely ask them to kind of contribute to I'm a big I'm a big fan on, on one of my ideas. I, I'm still working through. I've still got people looking and crunching the numbers with some of my ideas. I'm a big uh, fan of having satellite hubs for um, small, medium-sized enterprises um, away from central London, but I still have that kind of link. 
um, from you know banking or tech companies or people who want to start their businesses and things like that, um, and they don't have to always travel into London. You know, you can travel say twenty minutes or half an hour to these these satellite hubs and have a fantastic kind of area uh, to work from, a platform to work on. So I guess you could do those sorts of things if you just stayed in business, couldn't you? Why politics? That's the only way you can move things. Really? Really? Is that yeah. what you believe? You think from yeah. what you've seen, if to, to, to really make big changes, you have to be involved in politics? I think so, yeah. Yeah. For sure, you've got to be in politics to, to uh, bring people together. And I want to be a part of that. And I want to be the... Um, um, being mayor, I can definitely facilitate that, for sure. Now, sportsmen are notoriously single-minded uh, and, depends and, well, and selfish. Depends if you're centre-forward and I'm a defender, you've got to share it. True, <laughs> but I, I think... Um, and knowing the little bit that I do about you, I, I imagine, and I think all sportsmen would suffer from this when they move into politics, which is to possibly struggle um, to toe the party line, to have people above you saying, Sol Campbell, this might be in your interest, but it's not in the interest of the party. How would you handle that? I think it's all about being in a team. And that's what you, um, being in football, you've got to be a team player. And I was certainly a team player. Um, in any big company, you've got to kind of work together. Yes, you'll have mavericks. That's in any every industry. You'll have people who uh, want to go off on a tandem. Um, but in general, you've got to be a team player. You've got to have that kind of togetherness if you want to make things happen. happen. You win together, you lose together. That's what it's all about. And um, yes, I know politics, you have to toe the line in certain ways. But I think the longer you, you kind of toe the line and the more uh, ideas you come up, with, come up with, I think people can kind of bend a little bit and um, understand you a little bit more. So it's all about getting to know the person. You're, you're a very straight talker, though, I think it's fair to say. You like people to be straight with you, and, and you will often speak your mind. Um, politics doesn't always operate like that, does it? Behind the scenes, football doesn't operate like that. What, what do you mean by that? <laughs> well, there's a lot of... Um, Football's not straightforward. You see on the pitch it's straightforward, but uh, it, it's not really straightforward. There's so much politics in football as well. So it's not like I'm getting into a world... Yes, it's a slightly different landscape, um, a landscape which I have to get used to. Um, I think it's all about getting the right people around you to kind of uh, help you on that and navigate those uh, that landscape. Um, have you got them now? Because that is going to be critical. That. Yeah, that it's going to be critical yeah. for you now. It's, it's going to be surrounded by the right mm. sort of... Um, kind of apparatchiks in the background who are yeah. help, going to help you. Do you feel like you, those, the Conservative Party are going to be supportive of you? I think if uh, they weren't supporters of me, or supportive of me, I wouldn't be here. Um, yes, you have to get your own little mini kind of Team Campbell together mm -hmm. because you need people in your, in your corner, so to speak, and I totally understand that. So I am in the process of gathering information, gathering names to get people together, mm. um, talking to a few people to kind of make my job a little bit easier and I can just get on with um, talking and getting my point across and, and getting London to know me uh, on this level. Mm. That's what it's all about, really, to get London to know me. And I want, I want to fight for London. I want to fight for everybody. I want to fight for people who need help. Um, all these kind of things. I've I've got a lot of ideas. I've got people working on these ideas to crunch the numbers and see if they can really work. They might need tweaking here and there, and we'll see how it all goes. Other conservative uh, potential London mayor candidates are, of course, Saeed Kamal. He's been a, a he's Euro just come in. He's just announced that he would like to um, to run as mayor as well. He's been a London uh, Euro MP for ten years, incredibly mm. experienced, and of course. Zach Goldsmith has also officially today, we kind of knew it was coming, but he's officially said today that he would like to be in the running. It's pretty tough opposition, isn't it, for somebody who doesn't have political experience? Yes, it is. It is. I'm not uh, going into this um, political arena, into this uh, um, with my eyes shut. They're wide open. What do, what do you have, Sol? What does Sol have that Zach Goldsmith doesn't have. I think with all the candidates, what you can say is that I can connect with a lot of voters out there, a lot of London people. I've lived the life. Yes, I've had a, um, a fantastic uh, football career, but don't put that against me. Don't go, don't put that against my talent. Um, 
do people want someone who's made it and then thrown it away in the into the drain and then run for mayor? I don't think people want that in London. People want people who maybe have come from nothing or and understand that, looked after themselves, understands London and want to go to another level and want other people in London to go to another level and give them opportunities as as everyone else who's have who who maybe have had a privileged life. I want to give the opportunities to places, especially in the areas in London which haven't got that. I want to do that. I want to be a part of that. I want to facilitate that. I want to open um, the talent pool. I want I want people to start, you know, believing in London that their London's going to help them as well, and okay. there's opportunities that are there. And we're going to pick that apart in uh, a little bit more depth in in just a moment. Remember, you can watch this on LBC.co.uk in high definition, and uh, stay with us because uh, Sol is not going anywhere. This is LBC, and it's two forty five. I'm Amy Solomon in the LBC Travel Centre. On the North Circular, the inside lane of three still closed eastbound at the Neasden Interchange. It was after a lorry caught fire, so that's causing long delays still from the Hangar Lane gyratory. Also, Battersea Park Road, that's still closed both ways between the Latchmere traffic lights and Stanmer Street because of an accident. Police are directing you away. And a little further afield, if you're heading along the M20 towards the coast, it's actually closed between eight at Maidstone Services and Junction 9 at Ashford South. That's to park up lorries waiting to cross the channel. It's solid from seven at Maidstone on the approach. There are delays on Gura Tunnel and many of the ferries because of industrial action in France today. On the trains, the Belio Greater Anglia have delays of up to an hour and a half now. That's between Liverpool Street and Broxbourne because of a police investigation. Stansted Express also seeing cancellations and long delays this afternoon to and from Stansted Airport. Keeping London moving, your next travel update is in half an hour. This is LBC. A house fire can take away a lifetime of memories in two minutes. About the time it takes to test all your smoke alarms. Fire kills. You can prevent it. Everyone will have a reason for doing shine. Cancer Research UK's nighttime walking marathon on Saturday the 26th of September. Me? I'm doing it to celebrate my amazing mum getting the cancer all clear. So I want to shout it to everyone from the rooftops. Stop sleep! Sign up now at shinewalk.org! Event rules and entry fee apply. Winston Wolf, you're Bill and you drove your mini digger into the conservatory, right? Right. If I'm informed correctly, you're insured by direct line for business? Yeah. Then relax. They'll take care of the bill, Bill. Oh, thanks, Mr. Wolf. Winston, now do me a favor, will you? I need a whole dug urgently. Huh? I'm planting some saplings. Guaranteed to be any quote for the same cover. Can your insurance do that? Search Direct Line Public Liability Insurance. New customers only. Qualifying criteria apply. Underwritten by UK Insurance Limited. With my poor credit, I felt toxic. Finance companies were asking very high interest rates. Couldn't afford it. My only option was an out of warranty used car for cash. Or so I thought. Called Wills for sure. Week later, I had a lease for a brand new car. All manufacturer backed and upgrade to a new one every three years. I felt valued. Too good to be true? No, simply true. Used car on a costly loan or an affordable new leased one? You know the choice. For sure! Click or call Wheels for Sure on 020 82 89 71. We can help for sure. The smarter way to manage business expenses. Presented by Concur. I checked out of my hotel and the bill was automatically added to my expense claim. Then I hopped into a taxi, I took a picture of the receipt using Concur, and there it was, on my expense claim. Then I used my corporate card to buy the client's lunch. Another charge added to my expense claim. Expenses that write themselves. Just one of the many ways Concur helps manage your company's spend, so you can focus on the big picture. Take a free test drive at tryconcur.co.uk. Radio might be the theatre of the mind, but let's face it, you can't beat a good bit of telly, especially if it's a free telly. Well... Join Sky Online today and you'll get exactly that. A free 32-inch LG TV. Enjoy action-packed shows like Strike Back Legacy on Sky One. Plus the new series of True Detective on Sky Atlantic. Get all this and more from just £20 a month. But hurry, this offer ends 25th of June. Search Sky Bundles. Sky. Believe in better. Sky TV from £20 a month, direct debit, subject to status, £10 standard setup, upfront payment required, UK ROI only, minimum contract and further terms apply. At Simply Business, we're different because we focus on small business insurance, protecting the people who are building Britain's economy. The builders, the hairdressers, the bookkeepers. We're proud to support 46,000 of you here in London with tailored insurance at a great price because we know that Britain is built one kitchen extension, 
one cut and blow dry, one tax return at a time. Search Simply Business online now to get a quote. Simply Business is authorized and regulated by the FCA. Beverly Turner on LBC. You're listening to Beverly Turner talking to Sol Campbell, potential London mayoral candidate for the Conservative Party. Um, Sol, we, I know it's early days for you in terms of your policies, and you've been, you've been very honest about that. Um, some issues which crop up time and time again for our listeners. Where do you stand on Uber versus black cabs? It's a big London issue. Mm. Yeah, you know, I, was, I speak to a lot of um, black uh, cab drivers and... Um, yeah, it's a big problem. It is killing their business for sure. Um, I think we should do something to protect it. Um, to protect you, the black cabs. Yeah, you, you, know, you look you look at New York, the um, old cabs, such a famous thing for them from from films or people going over there. I would hate to see that you get the situation that black cabs are, are you know, basically you know, taken off the roads because of the uh, competition. Yes, mm -hmm. you've got to have competition to, for pricing and things like that. But uh, Uber have so much money behind them. Um, it's very hard to kind of deal with. But so we have to look at that because the black taxi is a part of London. Mm -hmm. It's, um, you know, it's in our DNA. Uh, I think we have to look at pricing and things like that, clever ways of uh, doing things. Um, one of the things I could could do and the mayor electric you know with a hybrid kind of cars kind of thing uh, and I would help to do that I think when you look at people to New York many times and from the airport there's kind of zones there where you've got certain kind of zones for certain certain um, amount of money I think that'd be good to introduce in, into London just from the airports I think that's a clever way of doing things but I think they do need a, a lot of a lot of help because Uber they've got a, a lot of money behind them mm. and um, uh, you talked about racism in in the foot in football in the past in, in the football association um, you don't you said correct me if I'm wrong but you, you quoted saying um, if I was white I would have been England captain for more than 10 years I corrected myself on that one that was a little bit of awful um, license and things yeah there. okay uh, within 10 years I uh, I should have captained England more than three times I see for my okay capability. okay what is it like to be a black man in politics is it very different to football I'm not in politics completely I'm, I'm on the peripheral I'm looking to get in um, I think when you when I how I look at it yes you look at Parliament yes it's a bit stuffy totally understand that it's stuffy because it's very old um, have you come up against anything that you would term racism in this pursuit of being London Mayor? Well, no, not really. Um, I think you've got to look at every scenario with with caution, um, but with optimism as well. Uh, if you thought of, if I thought of every single scenario I got involved in um, was a black issue, I'm not going to do anything. Sometimes you've got to believe in the best in people. I think that's what it's all about, and and if it's if you proved if if something happens um, to uh, maybe discount that, that's great. If if, if there is racism there, for, you know, get on with it. Uh, I think there's many ways of 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 negotiate a wall, go under it, go around it, go above it. You know, that's what it's all about. Did you see Barack Obama using the N word in this interview um, yesterday? Yes. Do you think he was right to do so? I think with uh, when you look at America. Um, you know, there's there's deep. They've they've come a long way uh, with the racism uh, side, but they've got a hell of a long way to to kind of. Uh, I don't think you will be able to eradicate it um, because it seems to be cropping up all the time on a. But it's on many levels. It's from gun levels. It's from policing. Uh, it's from the streets. Uh, they've got so they've got a lot of people over there, and there's a lot of problems over there. But then it's a beautiful country, and there's they're advancing so many other ways. Mm. Well, talking of the streets, how do you think, Sol, that we should we should tackle knife crime in London? Um, obviously, Sir Bernard Hogan House said this week he wants to increase uh, stop and search operations in London. Would you be in favour of that? I think what has happened with the stop and search, I think it went over the top. Um, you you almost feel like uh, victimized um 
and that it got to the stage it it did feel like that to a lot of people on the streets, and they felt like it was kind of um, dealing in what you know, stop and search one particular kind of race. And, how, just and with, that's where, with respect, how how would you know that though? Well, you like, listen to people. You, you obviously I watch the news and you you read the papers and you listen to people. That's what it's all about. I'm you know I'm not on you know another planet here. You know, my eyes are open and I know what's happening. I, you know, I don't only just see London. I feel London, and that's what it's all about. And um, have you ever did, been stopped? Uh, probably car wise, I've been stopped, but not on the street. Have no. you driving driving a flash car? No. <laughs> um, I'm sure you do drive a flash car. No, do you, no, I don't. Uh, I drive an electric car now. Oh, do you? Yeah. Oh, very good. Well, obviously, uh, Zach Goldsmith, I want to talk a little bit about Zach, because as we say, he is probably your your main rival. Um, They're all my main rivals. It's all about, it's not just about me, it's about picking the right mayor. True, but the, the, the thing that Zach will have in his corner, obviously, is that he is a, a key environmentalist, and, and the Green Party have, have pretty much come out and said that they would... Um, support their their voters to to vote for Zach mm. as London mayor. That's that's going to be. It's very difficult to compete with that when you have that in your locker, isn't it? I think when you look at it, I've been in scenarios that um, you know. If, if I thought every time I went out, I, I go back to a sporting kind of uh, analogy. If you thought that every time you went out on the pitch, um, you 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 was going to win, that's great. And then there'd be a time when you you walked out the pitch and you thought, you know what, I'm going to lose here. Um, what's the worth of turning up? Sometimes you're going to win. Sometimes you're going to come up to come against a, a formidable opponent. That's what it's all about. Competition breeds success. I think with the hustings and what's going to happen now until October, it's all about who's who. Sometimes leaders emerge. Some people are favourites, and favourites kind of you know back off. You don't know. Sometimes the favourites and they win. How much? I think that I mean, is hostings, what it's all about. Hostings are going to be very intense yeah. for you. Um, how much preparation are you going to do for those to convince the local Conservative Party um, decision makers that you're the right person for this job? I think yes. I think with the research I'm doing behind the scenes, I think that's good. And also being you, being me. Um, I'm not going to be something else. It's very hard being someone else. Um, you know, energy sapping as well. So. I'm going to come with a, a real angle, and that's what it's all about. I want to become, I don't want to lie to anybody. I don't want to kind of say I'm going to be this, I'm going to be that. I want to be me. And if me is not enough, that's fine by me. And we just, you know, move on and uh, let whoever wins uh, the, the uh, candidacy for, for the Conservatives, and good luck to them. If it's me, it's great. I'll go on. If it's not me, fine. Would you consider being put forward... Uh... Or would you accept being Zach Goldsmith's deputy? <laughs> you just putting these questions out. I'm Whatever. just looking through the various scenarios, Sol. You know, he's he's going to be tough to beat for the for the candidacy. Everyone, everyone's going to be tough so for Zach me because Zach turns I, around. He goes, no, Sol, I want you to be my deputy. How are you going to feel about that? No, let's let's go back. Let's just reverse a look back. You know, everyone's going to be better than me because maybe Ivan Masco because he's he's not. Um, uh, an MP, but everyone else is going to be my He's not, rival. Ivan Musk is not a serious contender. But um, what I'm saying is that everyone uh, in the group, they've got experience, and I understand that. But does London want that? Does London want that? That's what you've got to look at. Does London want to hear the same voices all the time? What and are they going to uh, hear oh, from Sol Campbell on housing? Housing? Um, we need 50,000 houses apartments you know for from uh, social housing to affordable housing I, i'm looking at uh, an, a scenario which is being which i've been kind of thinking about and i've got people looking at the figures and see if they can kind of crunch the numbers um one of the things i want to be able to give councils more money to outbid uh, some developers or work with developers um i think far too many kind of nice spots in london uh, are going to you know um, developers and, and then knocking them out for a hell of a lot of money. I think we've got enough of those at the moment. Um, I think we need some affordable housing for people on average wages. So one of the things I've, I'm kind of thinking about is you know, if I, if, if something in central London and a nice part of London and there's a, there's a plot going, um, I want the council, that particular council to go for it. But then when it, once it's built, I want to be able to sell, uh, the, a flat or apartment heavily discounted heavily discounted 
Um, but the one thing I, how I look at it, is I do not want one generation of of people living in there and then they sell and they sell at the top level of the market and then from there no one average pay can get in there so i want to control the uplift i'm going to give it to you for for heavily discounted but you can stay in for life but if you decide to sell in 10 years time 20 years time i want to control the uplift so the next person with your average pay and your dreams of living in in a nice area in central london can afford it because if you allow it to go into the marketplace within one generation it's gone you can't there's only going to be certain middle class or you know people with decent but really you know high wages 70 80 thousand pounds can get in there so i want to be able to control the uplift so generation after generation of people can afford to get into those housing it's quite an interventionist sort of policy though so is it? it's not terribly free market have you run that kind of thing past david cameron um no, it, that's why I'm getting getting people to look at it and work at it. Because for me, how I look at it, if you um, sell at a discount rate, you, it's a discount. It's, you know, just say argument say something costs uh, a flat costs five hundred thousand in London, but I sell to you for I don't know, hundred and fifty thousand. Uh, if you let that go within ten years, it's going to go probably past five hundred thousand that flat in central London, uh, in certain parts of London. So who can afford that? There's only one certain per, per type of people can afford to get into those kind of flats with average wage. So the only way to do it is control the kind of uptick. Because okay. there's enough houses out there with, you know, not in, not under control. And then you can go off and do whatever you want. All right. Sol Campbell is, is very kindly staying with us. Uh, and so should you. Uh, you can watch us online in HD at lbc.co.uk. But this is LBC and the time is 3.01. On FM, online on your mobile and on digital radio. Leading Britain's conversation. This is LBC. From Global's newsroom at three o'clock. A man who beheaded a pensioner in North London has been cleared of her murder on the grounds of insanity. 25-year-old Nicholas Salvador attacked 82-year-old Palmyra Silva in September last year. LBC's Simon Conway reports from the Old Bailey. Nicholas Salvador believed he was killing demons when he tore down fences and kicked down neighbours' doors in Edmonton, holding weapons, including a machete. Video footage taken from a police helicopter showed 82-year-old Palmyra Silva approaching him over her garden wall. Salvador then vaulted into her flower bed and killed her. The 25-year-old's trial heard that two psychiatrists agreed he was suffering from paranoid schizophrenia. The jury cleared him of murder on the grounds of insanity and he'll now be locked up indefinitely in a psychiatric hospital. Simon Conway, LBC, at the Old Bailey. The Foreign Office is advising British nationals in France to keep their car doors locked while driving in the Calais area. It's made reports of thousands of migrants trying to board vehicles coming to the UK. A strike by French ferry workers has led to long queues around the port. Lorry drivers are being urged not to stop within around 60 miles of Calais. Sol Campbell has told LBC he can connect with a lot of voters after announcing he's running for Mayor of London. The former Arsenal and England footballer is seeking the Conservative nomination. He's told Beverly he has a lot to offer. I want to fight for London. I want to fight for everybody. I want to fight for people who need help um, in businesses, in housing, all these kind of things. I've, I've got a lot of ideas. I've lived the life. Yes, I've had a um, a fantastic uh, football career, but don't put that against me. Don't, go, don't put that against my talent. It comes as the MP for Richmond Park, Zach Goldsmith, has confirmed he'll also run for Mayor of London. Meanwhile, tonight, Nick Ferrari will ho host a live debate at the Indigo 2. The current mayor, Boris Johnson, will be questioned on the state of London. And you can hear the debate live on LBC from 7.30. Two British teenagers have been arrested at the Auschwitz Museum in Poland. The 17-year-olds are being questioned on suspicion of stealing items that belong to prisoners held at the concentration camp. If found guilty, they could face up to 10 years in prison. British Transport Police are investigating after a video was posted online appearing to show a man taking cocaine on the tube. It was filmed on the Northern Line earlier this month. The former Chief Inspector of Schools, Sir Chris Woodhead, has died at the age of 68. He was diagnosed with motor neurone disease nearly 10 years ago. David Cameron says he started a crucial debate on school standards. And rescue workers cleaning up a zoo that was badly flooded in Georgia have found one of its penguins alive and hiding in the bushes. A runaway tiger mauled a man to death in Tbilisi last week before being killed by police. A search is continuing for another tiger and a hyena still thought to be on the loose after the flooding earlier this month. 
LBC weather. Some sunshine likely this afternoon in London and the southeast, staying dry, a high of 20 Celsius. Cloudy with some bright spells in central and northern parts of England. A similar picture for Scotland, fine and bright in Wales and Northern Ireland. From Global's newsroom for LBC, I'm Rupert Bartia. You're only one person. So if you want to tell millions of people all the great things about your business instantly, you're going to need a megaphone and be able to travel at the speed of light. Unless we get your customers to do it for you. Reputation.com will gather positive feedback from your happy customers and amplify it. To find out more about how we can help manage, improve and protect your brand's image online, visit reputation.com. Tonight on LBC, the State of London Debate. Boris Johnson faces your questions live with me, Nick Ferrari. The State of London Debate, tonight at 7.30, only on LBC. This is LBC, leading Britain's conversation with Beverly Turner. Call 0345 6060 973. Tweet at LBC. Text 84850. Beverly Turner on LBC. Sol Campbell is staying with us for uh, the next 10 minutes or so. That's right, Sol, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, and we've also been joined in the studio by uh, Theo Usherwood. Um, Sol, we're getting, uh, we're getting tweets here saying people are backing you. They're saying that uh, if your, your statement on housing was complete logic, he would get my vote. I'd support Sol Campbell to be London Mayor, comes another one. Um, it's very interesting as an ex-sportsman, isn't it? Because as soon as you put your head above the parapet and align yourself with a political party, you risk alienating half of the people who might have liked you beforehand. I think it's all about character. Um, look at Boris. Uh, he has uh, he got it together, you know. London is kind of labourish. But he was able to kind of cross London. So, I mean, it comes down to character and who you are as a person and also the policies as well. I think London is, I think when you look at England and, and the UK, I think it's a little bit different. But London's different. I think it's all about characters. And as long as that person is, is um, able to kind of amplify his, his thoughts and, and have the willpower to get things through. I think that's what London wants. Mm. Well, Boris has certainly made it into more of a character role, let's say. It is a high-profile job. And, well, and not a caricature, but, you know. And, and I've, I've brought Theo Usherwood in here. Theo, I just want to ask you, first of all, and I know this is a bit unusual, you're normally in here asking yeah. questions, and I'd like you to ask some of Sol, but what challenges do you think face Sol at the moment in, in the position that he's in with, well, forgive me, Sol, but no political experience, <laughs> um, but with ambition? What does he have to do? I think there are going to be two long-term problems if, if Seoul was to win it that he'll face. And the first is housing and, and getting enough homes built for uh, people on low and middle incomes uh, that they can afford either to rent or to, to buy. And the second one is transport. Mm. Uh, hundreds of thousands of people come to London every year to live and work, and the infrastructure is creaking. And I'd be quite interested to know what you think of Seoul, what, what, what needs to happen to the, the tube, the, the underground, what, what do you think needs to be done to solve the problems around transport and infrastructure? Well, it started already with a crossrail. Um, that's a big, massive uh, um, push to, to get uh, London moving uh, um, further afield. So that's, that's already begun. Yes, there's a hell of a lot of money, but I think the investment would be fantastic in the future. You know, having that that's a start yes with the uh, with the tube the underground it just needs investment it needs investment it needs maybe um lengthening some of the uh, platforms to get more carriages in things like that uh, but it just needs more investment put into it so do, do you use the tube do you are you a regular user i'm not a regular user <laughs> <laughs> but i have used it you know um you know i'm not when was the last time uh maybe about i don't know two three weeks ago yeah so, and I, I haven't got ISA card. You, you can you can use a credit card to kind of get through, or you pay on a day. Well, so you, so <laughs> or I like walking as well. Do you? So if you're going from if you're going if I, if you if you if you've been to see some old friends over in uh, on the uh, uh, at the Emirates and, and bump into maybe bump into Arsene Wenger and you needed to get to City Hall afterwards, what would be your what would be your route? City Hall. Uh, I think probably the best one may probably London Bridge or Tower Hill probably via. From which station? Well, you go probably along Holloway. Holloway Road, which which line? That, okay. uh, Piccadilly. Northern. Don't test me on the tube map. I would be useless as well. I, I think. Um, 
this is the kind of thing you're going to have to answer, Sol. This is the trouble. Wait, but the trouble is, when you ask these questions, they are so easy to answer. If you, if I was, you know, taking the train every day, you can kind of map it out. These are things that are so easy to kind of learn. So if I think what London wants is people with ideas and the willpower to get things through. You know, talking about a tube. You know, if you're saying how to map things out, that's just you know reading a book and 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 that's it. You know, it's not like. Anyone can do that. So if I'm up against people who are, who are reading the map of London un Underground, but then can't come up with decent ideas to actually help people who need help, then what, what way would you want? I think, I, think, I, think, I think what people would, and, I, and this is just talking about the sort of challenges that uh, candidates of all stripes, of all uh, political yeah, colour would face, that. would be around the... Um, uh, would be around the uh, uh, would it's be around the, what it speaks to. Yeah. Are you Authentic. are you a Londoner? That whole Dick mm. Whittington esque image. Are you a Londoner? And uh... it's. I think. Do you know what it is? So I think what it's going to be at the challenge for you is you're also a very private. You're a very private man. You're not the, the type of ex-footballer who's in Hello Magazine every week with your family. But then again, you've got most of the candidates. They're not uh, kind of out there, really. No, but what I'm saying is you're going to be subjected to a different level of scrutiny. If you become London mayor, if you become a politician, are you prepared for the level of scrutiny? Because you, you will have to be so well behaved. You will have to have no skeletons in your closet. It's very different from being a professional sports person. I'm ready for that. Okay. You're ready. Do you, are you? I mean, we just. It's a very difficult. It's a very difficult setting, and many. Uh, many and also, I'm not there yet. Mm. I'm not there yet. There's what? so many uh, hurdles to jump and hoops to go through before I even get to there. What is the plan if you don't? If you don't get the uh, the nomination to run as London Mayor, what's Plan B, Sol? Maybe try again in four years' time. <laughs> and what would you do politically in the interim in that four years? I'm not too sure. I haven't thought that far ahead, really. I'm all about kind of one job at a time, and uh, this is what is occupying me at the moment, fully occupying me at the moment. So, the, so I'm going to give it my best shot. Mm. Thea, what would what would a typical day in the life of Sol Campbell be if he is successful and becomes mayor? I think there's something that has crossed my mind, and, and Boris, I think, has. Uh, and that and that panache to get things done, and I was wondering when you've been when you're I imagine when you're a, a professional sportsman, everything is there. You click your fingers and it's there. You want you need a you need to receive some physiotherapy. It's there. If you need to get get out and do an extra hour on the training pitch, it's there. But I wonder when you go, when I know you speak, when I speak to politicians often, they go into a particular department, whether it's a Whitehall department or City Hall, and you click your fingers and you have to wait three weeks. You click your, you know, and it's, and I, have you, in your life outside of professional, because you've obviously had a career outside of, uh, outside of sport as well, what, in terms of property, how you've come across, is there anything that you've done that you think would equip you to deal with such a large organisation and to get things done because that's what Londoners want. Yeah, but you look at all the candidates who are there. Have they? You know, none of them have, have, have got the job. So yeah. most of them are going to be inexperienced. Yes, some of them are experienced in in that kind of day to day constituency in their own kind of area, but they're all going to be novices when they get in there anyway. Yeah. yeah. What do you admire about Boris Johnson? Well, I think one of the things he's he's definitely done was uh, to be able to kind of um, amplify all his uh, who he is, and what what he wants for London across London. And that's very difficult to you know doing that as a Conservative because you know most of the uh, most of London is kind of Labour. So he he's done a wonderful job doing that, and uh, that's one of his key things to kind of connect London uh, across London, and uh, one of his attributes for sure. So that's you know, where I see he's done very, very well. What has he not done so well? What would Sol <laughs> Campbell do question. better? That's a great question. That's a great question. What you're would Sol Campbell up now for you? You're <laughs> what, up now? What, what, what is he not getting right? Um, not getting right. Uh, I, you know, when you look at it, London's a very difficult place. You can't get everything right. You've uh, got to aim to, though, Sol. You've got to aim to, but, he's not, you know, he's done a great job. That's what I'm saying. He's done we've, got the state of London, we've got the State of London debate tonight uh, on LBC from 7.30. What would be your question to him? 
as an ordinary Londoner. There'll be lots of we'll be we'll be thrill, we'll be in the queues. We'll be trying to pick out questions. What would if you were in that queue, like a like one of our listeners, what would be your question? I think it, what is pressing is uh, is the housing situation. I think that's very pressing for everybody. Um, mm. You know, London is fifty thousand kind of homes built. Uh, that is pressing for people. Do you do you agree with the policy? I mean, one of the solutions people have talked about and, and Tories have talked about is allowing uh, allowing people to buy their own housing association homes. But of course, they have to be subsidised. Is that and the? I think, options, I, think, I, think all, I think all options are open. I think you've got to look at every single option because sometimes uh, you know you, you've got to keep on talking, you've got to keep on collaborating, and you a solution will be found. That's what it's all about: debating, and what you, you will come across it might might be by accident, but uh, or it might be just through idea. just debate. <clears throat> you think it's a good idea to housing association people? Because many, I mean, David Cameron has talked about that aspirational quality that you mentioned mm. earlier on in, in the interview with Beverly that you should give people the the right to buy their own housing association home. But of course, Boris has warned on the other side of it that actually that subsidy that. A subsidy of up to £100,000, that's going to have to be found from somewhere and, and it's going to be the taxpayer who well, picks up the bill. Where's, then, what's your source Well, I think a lot can come from the bond market. I think a lot can come from uh, big businesses uh, to help out with... with uh, and also doing deals, uh, good deals with builders and, and you know, giving them a few tax breaks or whatever. Trying to provide the subsidies. Yeah I, yeah, I think so, yeah. I think you've got to be able to get a, you know, crack a deal and, and get a deal over the line. I think there's, you know, there's, a lot, there's many ways to kind of skin a cat and I think that's what it's all about. Getting people who can get a deal done. But in terms We've of got to wrap it up, but yeah. I just want to quickly ask you, immigration, so we can't let you leave an LBC studio without asking, do we have a problem with immigration or is the problem exaggerated? I think with the immigration in London, uh, diversity in London is key. That is our strength. You know, you go around the world and we are the MV around the world. Um, you know, a lot of people pay taxes. Um, I think immigration is... I think people just want control. That's all they're saying. But for me, diversity is key. It's it's our power. You know, mm. we we are unique uh, when we uh, when you look around the world, when you travel around the world, all the different cities, all the big, big cities, you know, we are at the top there. Well, we hear all the time that from our callers that there is a dislike of career politicians. Uh, you're certainly not that. No. So uh, <laughs> we wish you all the best, and thank you very much for coming in thank to coming LBC. Up. Thank you. Uh, this is LBC. It's 3.15. I'm Amy 